We go on dates because we have an inherent fear of ending up alone and miserable. But if we can find a partner, then with enough luck, we can get married and be miserable together. But before all of that, there's a first date. And there are generally two kinds of men that go on dates with women. The kind that just want to sleep with her that night and the kind that might actually want to sleep with her again. There are also two kinds of girls you want to look out for. The first is the girl that already knows she wants to sleep with you and is just going through the motions so she can at least tell people you went on a date first. So she's probably just looking for some light-hearted conversation and to make sure you're not a serial killer. So I normally find that if I stay away from topics like politics, religion and the exact number of people I've murdered, the date normally goes pretty well. The second is the girl who's looking for her next boyfriend. So the conversation might need a bit more depth because she wants to know the kind of bloke you really are and how good you'd be at pretending to be a better bloke in front of her parents. Now, date conversation can sometimes be a bit difficult for blokes because you have to ask questions like, so how long have you lived in London? When you really want to ask, look, are we banging tonight or what? And if you are looking for your future wife, unfortunately, it's also not considered polite to ask about any of the important things that might actually affect the future of your family. Do you have any genetic disorders that run in your family? Any history of mental illness? Seriously, are we banging tonight? As a result, early conversation on a date is usually limited to generic topics such as work and hobbies, where, depending on which one you're asking about, the answers, I don't have one, playing video games all day, and OnlyFans, garner very different reactions. So she might start by asking questions like, what do you do for a living, what was the last book you read, and do you have any siblings? in order to get a general idea of how quickly you get annoyed at being bombarded with boring questions. But it's important you ask her these same questions back because this allows her to gauge if you're the kind of man that seems genuinely interested in hearing about a day at the office or if you're actually listening. Another consideration is how long you want to be on a date for. The idea being that the longer the date lasts, the better it's going. And whilst longer dates do have the benefit of giving you more time to get to know each other, they also come with the added risk of someone else seeing you on that date and telling your wife. Now, a common complaint that women have is spending hours doing her hair, picking her outfit and even shaving her legs just for the guy to flake on the date at the last second. So as a guy, if you can't make the date with a girl, then at least have enough respect for her time and text her as early as possible to ask for some nudes. You know, so she didn't shave her legs for nothing. In regards to who pays for the date, this all depends on how you were raised. For example, I was raised to believe that a true gentleman always pays as it shows the woman that he not only cherishes her time, but that he's the kind of man that will always take care of her. So I don't pay. However, back when I took my girlfriend out on our first date, I already knew she was special. And even though I didn't normally believe in splashing the cash on a first date, I really wanted to give her the most romantic dinner possible and I knew that the only way to do that was to man up and pay for both Happy Meals. But if you take her to a place where you're expected to pay at the end, like most things involving women, the process is incredibly straightforward. What's supposed to happen is, she offers to pay even though she has no intention of paying. Then you have to pretend you don't know she has no intention of paying and then stop her from not paying and then offer to pay the bill yourself. She then pretends not to know that you know she had no intention of paying and then says thank you. You then say no problem, pretending not to know she knows you know that when she says thanks for paying, she's really saying thanks for playing because she knows that you know it was a game you just played where if you hadn't paid, you wouldn't get laid because romance. Play. And if by the end of the date, you both still like each other, this is the part where you either decide to sleep with each other that night or you agree to drag things out for another couple of dates while you both pretend that you're not sleeping with other people. However, if at the end of the date, she's into you, but you're not really into her, and you've decided that she's not right for you and that you have no future together, then the most ethical advice I can give you is do not, I repeat, do not sleep with her. Any more than two or three times. Only do it at her place so she doesn't know where you live and then change your phone number ASAP. And with any luck, she'll just think you're dead.